Hi, this is another Flutter video. This time let's talk about boxes. Let me explain first, because you may be thinking boxes, boxes, that's a very basic topic in Flutter, and I absolutely agree. But I am reading a lot of code bases, and I'm working with a lot of code bases written by different people, and frequently what I'm seeing is that there is a lot of usage of a one specific box called a container. And there is nothing wrong with using container itself, but there are alternatives to container that can be used in different places, and also there are alternatives that can do more than the container itself. So I would like to go through all different options for boxes in Flutter that we have today. First of all, we of course have the container, which is a container, so it is a box, but it's not named a box, like many of other options that we have. And this is quite a versatile widget coming from the Flutter framework. If we look at this documentation, then it can do plenty of things. We can set alignment, we can set padding, color, decoration, foreground decoration, width height, and so on. There's really a lot of things that we can do with it. For example, if you want to have a box like this blue box 200 by 200 that I have on the screen right now, then container is the best solution because we can put height and width together with color on it. And we only have one widget to do it. However, let's think of a situation when we have a, this container and then we want to have some picture inside of it. This picture already will come with a background color of blue. Let's simulate that by giving it a child. Container. And let's move this color over here. Like so. So this second, this nested con container right now, let's say that it's simulating some PNG that is blue. And in this case, all we want to do is we want to set height and width. So we want to size this image to 200 by 200. And we can do it by, with the container, but you can see already that we get this notification from the analyzer that we could use a sized box instead. So let's do just that. Here we go. So if we have our fake PNG over here and we want to just size it, then size box would be the preferred option, already thanks to the analyzer that hints us. There is a very small performance um, advantage maybe over here, because if you have a look at the container, and its implementation, let's find the build method, there we go, then in order to set all of these different um, properties that the container itself has, then it do, does quite a lot of if checks, and if we use sized box, then we don't have to go through all these if checks and check, for example, if the constraints are there, if the margin is there, if the transform is there, and so on. Here's the documentation on the sized box, and it's basically a box with a specified size. All we have over here is just these two parameters. So if we have a look down here in the properties, we can give it some height, we can give it some width, and of course it takes a child. Finally, we also get a couple of predefined factory constructors, like the expand constructor, which will make the box as big as it can be, as the parent allows. If you use from size, then in case some API gives you a size, then you can just apply this size to a size box with this from size. Another option is this constructor.shrink, and this is to be used when we want to return an empty widget. And finally, in case we would like to size something to a square, so we can use this .square factory constructor and just give it a dimension, which will be then applied to both width and height. The next box I would like us to look at is this fractionally sized box. And this is a widget that sizes a child to a fraction of the total available space. So instead of a sized box, let's have a fractionally size box. And now we don't pass height and width anymore. Let's see what we have. We have a width factor and height factor. So let's give it a width factor of 0 0.7 and height factor of 0 0.3. Let's save that. Here we go. So by using the fractionally sized box, then we are taking some fraction of available space which means that this fractionally sized box has the, all the available space that it can use. So 70% over here of the width is what we can see rendered over here, and 0.3 means that we are taking up 30% of the height, of the, all the available height over here on the example. Next, we have a fitted box. And this is a box that scales and positions its child within itself according to a fit. So let's change our fractionally sized box to a fitted box. Now we don't have the factors anymore. So now let's constrain our box with another size box over here. Size box with width 200, with height 200. 
And now let's say that our container over here also has some width. Let's say that it will be 300, whoops, 300 width and height 200. Let's save that and let's see what happened. So currently we have fit contain. We have a size box which is constraining us to 200 per 200 and then we have a container which is 300 per 200 which means that this container is actually too big so it does not fit inside of this size box. Now if we remove this fitted box what happens is we get our container to fill the sized box. But if this container would be an image of 300 per 200 then it would get clipped right now. Instead if we use the fitted box then we can use the fit parameter to set how it should fit inside of the box. Let's have a look at a different option of the box fit that we have. There is fill which fills the target box by distorting the source's aspect ratio. We have contain so as large as possible while still containing the source entirely within that target box. So this is what we've done before. Then we have cover so make it as small as possible while still covering the entire target box. Then we can use fit width, fit height, none, we can scale down. Let's do that. There we go. That's our fitted box. Next is the limited box. And this is a box that limits its size only when it's unconstrained. So when we use a limited box and we are in a constrained um, environment, then it will have no effect. But if we will have a limited box in an unconstrained environment, then it will take effect. So if the widget's maximum width is unconstrained, then its child width is limited to max width. Similarly, if the widget's height is unconstrained, then the child's height is limited to max height. And in order to see that, I have a slightly different example over here. So I'm using a list view because a list view in the direction of scroll is unbounded. So currently we have the vertical direction of scroll over here. So in the vertical direction, the widget could be potentially unbounded. And then I have this container, which doesn't have any constraints on it or any size. So let's first remove this widget, limited box. And you can see we can see nothing on the screen. And this is because in this case, the container gets the value with or an height of zero. So it is not drawn on the screen. So now even if we want to prevent that, so now our container will still be drawn on the screen, we can wrap it with the limited box. And we can constrain it, for example, to maximum height of 200. We can change it to 400. And now our container, which by default tries to expand to as much space as it can, it will get 400 pixels in height. If we try to instead put this limited box anywhere else, where we have some kind of a bound, even if we don't have anything above limited box in this simple example, so we have center and we have scaffold, we are still limited by the size of this window over here. So the limited box has no effect. We can give it all the constraints we want and it is not gonna do anything. All right, we have our box now back. But over here I'm using a container just to draw something that has a color. Actually, we have a different way to do it in Flutter. For that reason exists the colored box and it's a very very simple box. Everything it does is it takes color as an argument, a required argument, and it draws this color. Let's have a look into it. All we have to do over here is to change the container into a colored box. There we go, everything still works. We can have a look over here. Also if you don't trust me, let's make a hot restart. There we go, hot restarted. It was so quick we can't even see the change. The only thing that changes now, when you use the colored box or a sized box instead of a container, is that these widgets have a constant constructor. So now our whole tree can be instead constant. There we go. If you're using a container, then container does not have a constant constructor. Let's have a look over here. Here is the constructor of a container, no const. Now let's go back to colored box. Let's have a look at colored box. Here we go. We have a constant constructor. This is another very small performance advantage. Another thing we can assign to a container is decoration. So we have this decoration and we have also foreground decoration or foreground decoration. So this decoration paints in front of the child. And if you use just decoration, it paints behind the child. And we could use container to assign it if we would have the color over here. 
What if we would not set the color, but instead just want to set decoration? Then instead we also have a box for that. And this box is called a decorated box. And let's just take this example from here. As you can see, we also can use now a constat constructor. So let's apply that. And you can see how the decoration is working. So instead of our container, we can use the decorated box. And in this example, you can see that they are decorating this beautiful um, square, not square, a rectangle that we have over here with this beautiful little dot or a hole. Maybe it's a hole. <laughs> the next box that we will look at is a rotated box. When we want to rotate an element of a screen, usually we would use something like a transform. But in case of some rotations at least, we also have the option to use the rotated box. A rotated box is a widget that rotates its child by an integral number of quarter turns. So here is the important information, it does the quarter turns. If we have a look at the documentation down here, then in the properties you have these quarter turns, which is an integer. Let's try it out now. So we have our beautiful decorated box and now let's wrap it with a widget and this will be a rotated box. And this box requires the quarter turns. So let's apply, let's give it one, here we go. <laughs> there it is. There we go. Three. And as you can imagine, if we do four, then we do a whole cycle around. So that's the limitation of this rotated box. It can only rotate four times. Unlike transform, which applies a transform just prior to painting, this object applies its rotation prior to layout, which means the entire rotated box consumes only as much space as required by the rotated child. All right, I hope you liked this video, but this is not all of the boxes that we have in Flutter. So please stay tuned and look for the next video where we finish it up and we will move to some a little bit more advanced boxes that Flutter offers. But for now, I caught you to death and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.